I've been collecting and interested in oriental rugs for uh, for decades, uh, since the 19, late 1970s, I guess. And uh, coming up is, is a sale that I normally wouldn't cover. I don't normally cover just rug auctions, but this is a great rug auction. And this is an auction that's going to take place in Boston, Skinner's. And it's a, actually a two-day sale. One of them is a live auction taking place on May 4th. And then there is an online sale, which is a time sale, which has already begun. The 25th started yesterday and is going to conclude on May 5th, the day after the live auction. And the collection belongs to Jim Dixon, or belonged to him. He passed away in 2020. And he'd been an avid collector of Persian rugs and Central Asian rugs and Chinese rugs and Turkish rugs and every kind of great rug you could imagine since the 1970s. He lived out in uh, California outside of San Francisco uh, and uh, built up a legendary collection. Murray Island, the great rug author, wrote about it. Uh, Holly Magazine featured stories about his rugs and so forth. And he died and apparently he didn't have anyone to really leave it to. So he's, he's auctioning it all off and all the proceeds are going to a, a charitable organization out in his area. Apparently he was involved with it. But the, the carpets are the main thing. And, and what Jim collected were historic fragments and old, very old pieces. Um, he, he was not interested in particular in condition. Condition was not the thing that drove his collecting. What drove his collecting was, was, the, was the history by region. Um, uh, the older, the better. And uh, he, he didn't really care if, it, if it's a 17th century rug or an 18th century rug, if it's worn and tattered. He didn't really mind it as long as the image was there and he, he was able to study the construction, the dyes, and all that sort of thing. He was really into it. And uh, you'll see here there's some uh, fragments that to some people who aren't interested in textiles will think, oh, you know, it's a wreck. And uh, you have to understand that that's not what the, his collecting was about. His collecting was about collecting the oldest and rarest types he could have possibly afford. And he wasn't a wealthy guy, but he did manage to, to, to uh, catch some pretty incredible carpets. And we're going to go through some of them. All right, just a few to give you give you an idea of what's going on. And we're going to start with the Chinese stuff because he, he had he had this is the uh, 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 this is the uh, online sale. You have to register and then you you place bids. Everybody knows how to do that. And it's at Skinner Inc. in Boston, Skinner Auctions. Um, there's a lot of good uh, Chinese textiles in here. One of them is this. It's a brocade panel to, uh, with shishi on it. Fulines. Now, they have it dated as uh, 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 18th century. I think it's older than that, but uh, uh, I'll let you decide. I think, uh, to me, it looks more likely that it's a late Ming example, but uh, uh, it's absolutely beautifully done. It's got, some, uh, it's got some discoloration up here and all this, but this is a very, very old fragment. And if you, if you know anything about Chinese textiles, you'll know that 99% of the Chinese textiles you see uh, were made uh, from after 1875. Um, that turn up on the market. Most of them are not older than that because they wore out. Most of the dragon robes you see are 19th century. Uh, most of the rank badges you see are 19th century. And it's very unusual to have an auction with a lot of very old, old, old fragments. And this is just one of them. Uh, spectacularly well done. Lots of detail. This l wonderful lattice pattern going around the outside. But the, the manner that, that the clouds are executed, the, s the selection of the limited color palette, and uh, so forth, but the color palette's not quite as limited as it appears. If you look carefully, you'll see quite a, quite a variety of color. But but it's predominantly this this amber gold color, and then this beautiful soft blue, um, uh, which in the way the foo lines are done lead me to think this is in the way the tails on the foo lines are done. To me, this looks more like a Ming fragment than a, a Qing fragment. Regardless, it's estimated at one thousand to twelve hundred dollars with a five hundred dollar starting bid, which is very reasonable. And it's 14 by uh, 19 inches, so it's fairly good size. It's hanging size. All these pieces are really for hanging. They're not the, a lot of. I mean, there's some rugs here that you could put on the floor, but but a lot of them are, are, should be bought with the idea that they are art, sort of woven paintings, so to speak, and you have bits like that. And then you have this this export embroidery panel. Um, they said it's 18th or 19th century. I, I'm not going to quibble either way. Though I will say, so a lot of the vine ornaments. The way the vines are done, they call it in the French style. It's actually, um, if you look up uh, old Yon Dynasty um, silks, you'll see the very, very similar feeling in the in the in the in the vines and the flowing, uh, these sort of arabesques that go around, and the way the flowers are done and so forth. Uh, very reminiscent of the, some of the Yuan workmanship that was done 
uh, but they say this was export for the French market. I don't, I don't know, uh, maybe it was, but uh, the style is a much older one and it's Chinese. Uh, so there you go, nice looking thing. And the estimates, are, again, all the estimates are extremely reasonable. I, don't, I expect a lot of these estimates will be made, t turned to dust. Um, when this auction takes place, but what the what it, what it's telling you is that with low estimates and low starting bids, as you all know, you c you'll be able to leave a bid on it, and you have a shot at least of getting it at a good price, uh, because the the reserves can't be too high; they can't be above the low estimate. So on a piece like this, it's a pretty big panel, 40 by 27. The uh, estimate is $500 with a starting bid of 250, and I suspect the reserve is 250 on it. I, I don't think it's probably much more than that. And then you have this embroidered panel that came from an informal robe, 19th century, but beautifully done. This is a really, really pe pretty piece of silk. And we've talked about these before. We've seen them on the internet. We've seen them on uh, other auctions, eBay's. eBay's had them and so forth. But this is a very nice one, an extremely elaborate lower section. And then these beautiful rondelles running around it and make a great hanging for any room. Um, just you remember always with silk, you don't hang them anywhere in the sunlight because they'll fall apart in about a month. But um, other than that, they're, absolutely, they're, they're fine. Um, 27 by 72, this is a six feet long with a five to $700 estimate, 250 opening bid. All right, and then on to this. This is, the, this is gonna probably, I think it'll make headlines. Um, this is an Imperial Ming Dragon carpet, probably Wan Li period. And this is big. It's 11 by 11 feet. It's uh, almost square. It's missing uh, its outer borders, apparently, uh, uh, or a little bit of the outside. It's got, it's got an old patch there and a patch up in here. Um, it looks to me like when they did the patching, they did intentionally not to deceive anybody, but just to fill in the space. Um, uh, so you can see that, okay, this is a patch, but it, it shows what the pattern would have been coming down. But again, here you have this Ming this Ming, Ming padding with the use of these curly, sort of curly clouds done in this style. And they are very much in the manner of um, this panel that we just looked at. That's one of the, one of the, one of the pointers I have that it's, it's me. I think this is probably a Ming panel because here you have this and then uh, over there you have the, uh, you have the, 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 the uh, uh, Wan Li uh, carpet, very heavy, very loose, very floppy wool, and overall the pile in this is an absolutely remarkable condition. Um, um, most of the t most Ming carpets are you know just worn to bits, and uh, this thing is in uh, you know for 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 its age, having been made around 1580 or 1590, 1600, somewhere in there, uh, it's in incredible condition absolutely incredible condition and it's estimated at two to three hundred thousand dollars and um what it's worth i i th i think it's worth a lot probably may be worth a lot more than that uh, uh uh only because it's so rare it's so big and it's in such good condition so if you see this if you see if if, if i come back and we do the review after the sale if this thing sold for uh, a million dollars or more i wouldn't be at all surprised I wouldn't be in the least bit surprised, but we'll see. We'll see what the market says about it. But to me, if, if you're a rug buyer and you have a, a, a heavy, heavy wallet to do things, this is something that comes along only every 10 years, every 20 years. And uh, I urge you to take a shot at it. It's a great thing. And then there's this, the shower embroidery. And this is like another thing that we've seen before, but this is a very good one. Um, estimated at seven to $900, it's 63 by 31 inches. And it's, in, it's a beautiful piece of silk, beautifully done with, with immortals all through the middle, very finely worked all the way down with this, within this big shower character and against this very fine satiny silk uh, bronze colored background all woven. It's just beautiful. Absolutely great thing. Uh, very low estimate, seven or nine hundred. We've seen these sell before. Typically, they bring two to three thousand. So we'll see where that goes. All right. And then there's this: a cut chair, a cut velvet chair cover. Um, uh, they've got it dated to the 18th or 19th century. Um, I, I, I don't see this at all as being a, a 19th century thing. Um, uh, the, the way the, the food lines are done, the board of the colors. And all that, um, uh, and the way the dragon is depicted, uh, the four-clawed dragon appears much more likely to be 18th, early 18th century than late 18th century to 19th century. Um, it's got some old repairs around the top, but it's estimated at just five to seven hundred dollars with a two hundred and fifty dollar opening bid, twenty inches wide, sixty-five inches long, or a little over five feet long. 
and uh, absolutely beautiful. An absolutely beautiful fragment. And uh, again, crazy low estimate. Sh should bring five times the estimate. But you got a shot. Leave a bid. All right. And uh, uh, th these things are also listed on uh, live auctioneers, but it's for viewing only. If you want to bid on any of this stuff, um, um, uh, you, you online, you have to go to the Skinner site, just so you all know. <clears throat> all right, or, or may, maybe it'll be on Bid Square. I'm not sure because the Skinner's was one of the backers of Bid Square, but um, I'll check that. Uh, but the their their online sale so far appears to be just on their site. Anyway, here's this is the live sale we're talking about. And then you have this rank badge, a really nice 19th century rank badge. Um, good color, very elaborately done, uh, very much done in the, uh, seven, in, the, in, in, the, in the early 18th century manner, but more stylized, identifying it as a 19th century piece. But with these, um, the, the profusion of flowers, the, the way the foo line is perched and all the clouds, uh, where they done a bit differently, it would, it would appear a bit older. But uh, this, is, this is a 19th century uh, badge. Estimated at $800 to $1,000, $400 opening bid, and probably going to bring $1,500 to $2,000. And ditto for this one. This one is even um, uh, uh, considered to be uh, better. Um, uh, the, the colors are a bit more muted. But again, you have this same sort of scene with the clouds all around above done in a very old-fashioned uh, style. Uh, they, they've got it dated out as 19th century. Estimated at fifteen hundred to twenty-five hundred dollars. Uh, I think it may be a bit older than that than in the nineteenth century. My my feeling is it's probably late eighteenth century, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what the prices are. Opening bid is seven fifty, which is I think fine. And uh, then over to this uh, a Ningxi uh, rug, but and we've seen these before. They turn up, but not one this old. This is a late eighteenth century example made at the end of the Qinlong period. And uh, uh, possibly Jai Jing, but probably Chin Lung. But uh, absolutely wonderful colors. Um, it's a bit thin in places because it's, it's so old. But this rich gold ground, uh, beautiful outer border. And what's really interesting is the reds haven't faded. Uh, often the reds on these carpets fade due to age and sunlight and environment. And uh, this one obviously was taken well care of, cared for. It was walked on quite a bit, obviously, but uh, a beautiful carpet. And again, this is something you would hang. It isn't something you would put in a hallway because it would be destroyed in a matter of a year or two. But properly mounted, this would be a great thing to put on a wall. It's six by 12 feet. So you could use it uh, like the way, the way they hang French tapestries in a dining room or a library or in a big hallway. Um, you know, it would look spectacular. And uh, great color, soft, uh, very nice. And then over to this, an embroidered couch or throne seat cover. Um, a, a estimated at three to 5,000, uh, dated as 18th or 19th century. I think it's pretty obviously an 18th century piece, mid 18th century. But uh, the pattern and so forth, we've seen before. Now in perfect condition, these bring 15 or $20,000. So we'll see what this one brings. It's got a little bit of staining and whatnot on it, but it's intact. And there's a, a, a lot of activity going on here. Uh, the reds are still uh, in pretty good shape all the way around. The blues are fine. And uh, we'll see what that brings. The estimate, uh, uh, three to 5,000. Uh, that sounds about right on this one. That sounds about the right estimate. But we'll see. We'll see. If somebody absolutely has to have it, you know, you never know. And this is what I think is, you know, one of the way, way undervalued uh, estimated pieces in the in the auction for some reason. I don't know why. It's a Kesey dragon panel from the, um, uh, they call it 17th or 18th century. And... Um, I think it's probably much more likely uh, 17th and early 17th century, late Ming. Um, here you have this 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 Ming style, this Ming looking dragon, um, with these Ming looking clouds and Ming looking wave pattern at the bottom. Um, uh, a really rare thing. It's been I mean it's been cut and fitted onto this background, but uh, this is a very very nice example. Very animated, very very strong, and. Uh, I think the estimate is ridiculous, seven hundred to nine hundred dollars. I, I would, I, you know, uh, in the past when these these types of key seat panels turn up of these this age, the the, the uh, you could sort of add a zero onto that estimate, um, or you know, six to ten thousand somewhere in that price range. Uh, um, I, I th years ago, twenty years ago, we had a fragment in one of my own auctions that we ran without the internet, and I think it brought five thousand. 
And that was a long time ago. And then on to this, the Ming carpet fragment. I think this is one of the most geometrically appealing things in the, in the sale. It's absolutely wonderful. Four to $6,000 estimate, three by four feet, but absolutely beautiful, beautiful colors. And it looks like it's in great condition. Um, uh, all the way through uh, the the the, uh, the the brown uh, uh, ground wool the the uh, and that's these are the probably natural colors and the tan wool and then the blues the greens lots of color lots of colors tucked in here you've got two or three shades of blue two or three shades of green two or three shades of brown the little black or um, or very very dark brown wool and it's woven it looks like it's woven on a cotton foundation but excellent quality absolutely excellent. Um, uh, sometimes the, in China they would weave them on, on hand spun cotton foundations and sometimes hand spun cotton foundations um, or wool foundations and then sometimes they use silk in the wefts and so forth when they're constructing the rug but uh, this is this is a nice one they've got it dated uh, Wanli 1600 all right and then over to this a fragment of a Caucasian blossom carpet uh, these are the kind of things that you find at the Metropolitan Museum uh, you might find the whole rug at the Metropolitan Museum, but this is an extremely rare fragment. Um, three by four feet, circa 1800 or earlier. I think this is pretty clearly, if you've, if, you've, if you've spent any time studying these rugs, this is pretty clearly a rug that was made around 1750 or older. Uh, but the blossoms are beautifully developed. The, uh, the, the serrated leaf design is very strong. Uh, and, and then you have this wonderful ivory uh, uh, outer border. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, like I said, this is a fragment. This should be hung on a wall, um, uh, uh, three by four, three by five, almost three by five feet, three foot ten by th four foot nine inches. So it's a pretty good size, and it would look wonderful on a wall with a light over it, soft light. And the same thing with this. This is a Mughal Indian silk rug uh, from the uh, 18th century. Uh, absolutely wonderful looking. Uh, and this royal ruby red ground that was so popular in India. This this very warm red. And, and the silk, I'm sure, on this just shimmers if you if you handle it. And uh, there it is, all the way around. And it looks like it's in, in, in rather good condition for its age. It says in the description, it says very good colored, a very good pile and field color uh, reduced in length at one end or the other. Um, I don't see where you'd have to flip it over and see where the uh, where it was cut, um, if if or resectioned if it was cut down in length, but. Any rate, uh, just uh, if you, if you like beautiful, beautiful Asian textiles, this is it. It's from India, absolutely spectacular, absolutely spectacular Mughal Mughal workshop material, and then along to this one, um, a Northwest Persian or possibly Southern Caucasian rug. These are always sort of a, a mixture. They, years ago, some people used to think these were Turkish. Uh, but at any rate, uh, this is a, a really attractive rug. The yellow border on it is beautiful. These this large blossoms going through it, and then these lattice designs all through it. And it's, it's, it's a lot of these Middle Eastern rugs and Persian rugs, um, um, Caucasian rugs were often designed as, and, and, he, and, and, and Mr. Dixon talked about it quite a lot when he gave lectures, about how they were often supposed to be like a camera view, an overview of a garden. Like you were flying over it and you look down into the garden. And um, uh, here you, you, know, you have the, the vines crawling around the outer section, around the walls, and then in the middle you have these flowers. And you're sort of a snapshot. Um, uh, on some carpets, and that's sort of what he was shooting for um, in, his, in his, his view of these things. At any rate, this one is a beautiful uh, 5 by 8 feet. This is a pretty big rug with a very low starting bid, $1,500 and a three dollars to $4,000 uh, estimate. Uh, I, I um, at a loss to understand the estimate, but uh, it seems awfully low to me uh, for something this old and, and with such good color, and uh, it, it is technically a fragment, of, from a larger carpet, uh, but it has a pretty good size, a uh, pretty good pile, and um, was slightly reduced in length at some point. And then this, the West, um, um, uh, West Anatolian medallion carpet, another beautiful example, another one uh, very modestly estimated. Uh, again, I'm a bit baffled. It was made in the, in the mid-19th century. They dated 1870, four by four feet, Eight to twelve hundred dollar estimate with a four hundred dollar opening bid. It's got one bid already. Not a surprise, uh, but a beautiful, beautiful example. 
And uh, this is all over on Skinner Inc. If you want to see this thing at the Skinner auction site. And then this, if you want a great Caucasian Talish carpet, this thing is so crisp. It is so pretty. Uh, and it's in, apparently in very good condition. This is one of the one, the one rug that's in, among the best condition of any of the rugs being sold. It looks like it's practically new. And this is an old rug. This is a very nice old rug from the uh, uh, mid-19th century. Uh, but be beautiful, crisp, crisp pattern, uh, nice, nice white um, uh, contrast in the thing with the reds and the blues. Just absolutely beautiful carpet. And uh, estimated at $1,800 to $2,200 with a $900 bid, or starting bid. And it measures three by seven feet. But great color, um, a very nice condition, and uh, a rug you could use if you want to or hang it. Um, uh, it's a, uh, spectacular. And then on to this, this Azerbaijani and garden carpet. And when I mentioned a few minutes ago about how they, 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 they said, you know, to view carpets from above as though you were going over them and looking down into a walled garden. This is really the classic design that that, that notion came from. Um, rugs like these, like these, they're called garden carpets for a reason. And uh, here you have these uh, squared off sections like a garden. And you have this, this garden here and another garden. And down the middle, you have these wavy devices. And those are supposed to be like a river or water running through the gardens so that they could, they could keep, them, you know, keep them green and keep them flowering. And another section of river going through here. And uh, so you have water flowing through it. And now you have these walled off or, or, or edged in gardens of different types of flowers blossoming and blooming. And then within on one side, this what's known as a dog tooth border. Um, sealing it in and then down this side you have cypress trees growing up on the ins, uh, along, along the edge of it it's just a wonderful concept and then the cypress trees continue down here at the bottom and more water and more water over here and more water running over there and it's just wonderful it's a very elegant beautiful thing and uh, again for hanging this is a hanging rug it is six by 12 feet you need a big wall for it but boy would it be beautiful the starting bid is two thousand dollars four to six thousand dollar estimate and it was made in uh, Iran in the 18th century and you know probably around 1750 somewhere in there very very nice and then on to this if you like Caucasian rugs uh, from the from, you know from the Caucasus uh, this is a, a fantastic rug mid 19th century Cuba and uh, they, this is very notable for a couple of things. One is this great outer border. And then you have this great interior with heavily arbrash gold wool thread running through it. Just or yellow, this warm yellow gold color. Beautiful, beautiful color. And, uh, and, then, and then punctuated with these areas of red and these flowers. These are all angulated flowers and, and, and blossoms coming up in, in a garden within this uh, walled border. Mm -hmm. Just, absolutely beautifully done beautiful this is a very wonderful thing this might even be older than mid 18 mid 1800s um let's blow this picture up here for a second i'm just looking i wanted to see how they i was nodded but the back of this thing looks like this looks older than that this this looks like an 18th century rug they have it dated as 1850 um not so sure. Um, it looks, it, 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 the way it's, the look, the style of the border, um, this border around here and the way the field is done in this yellow looks older than that to me. It looks older than that. And then a, a classic, um, a classic pinwheel Kazakh. Uh, these are a wonderful, uh, beautiful carpet, very popular. If you've been collecting rugs for any length of time, you know about pinwheel Kazakhs. This one is very graphic, very strong, has a very beautifully done uh, contrasted outer border and then this the, this very typical red field with these pinwheel devices on it. And uh, these rugs typically sell for pretty good money. Uh, I, I, uh, the estimate here is, is four to six thousand, uh, but don't be surprised if it goes over ten uh, because it's, it looks like a pretty good example. It says it has very good pile, some repairs and restorations to it. Uh, but it's a mid 19th century or older, has newer ends and side finishes and all that. It's just all that when you hear about the side finishes being done, all they did was they had a restorer go down the edges just to tighten it up so the whole thing doesn't unravel. Because often the side, uh, the, the, the overcasts on the on the sides of the rugs wear through in time, and um, and and the, the rug will very quickly fall apart if it's not taken care of. 
So uh, be glad when you see that, that kind of a note. And uh, this is the uh, online only sale. And you see some pretty, uh, sort of, rough, you know, a little bit rough looking textiles, but these are historic textiles. These are textiles of much more age than you typically see. Uh, most of the rugs you see on the market today were made after 1920. Um, we cover a few of them, of course, from time to time. The, the, some rugs over in Austria, material culture. They have some nice textile auctions and so forth. They have good Caucasian pieces, good Chinese, and all that. But typically, the rugs you see around on the today's market were made in the 1920s or, or later, no matter what the dating says on it. But this is the kind of thing that, that is in there, is that, is that if, you, if you have a modest budget, you, you might want to take a shot at some of these. This is a, a West Anatolian village rug fragment. And it is graphically very, very strong. It's two by two foot seven inches by three foot ten. So it's pretty good size. Put a black backing on this and hang it, and it would look absolutely wonderful. And it's 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 you know it's 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 a it's a shadow of its former self. But boy, is this worth preserving? Uh, just a, a beautiful old fragment. Um, it's had it's had a long life, obviously. But it's very, very, very old, uh, probably made, I think it's much older than 1800. I think it was m made around 1720, but um, a very nice example. Very, very nice. And then this is one of my favorite things in here. If, if it's a later if a bag face. It's a late 19th century bag from Af the Afshar region, Persia, if you like them. And what's very striking about this, this, these vine and flower devices, the very stylized and angulated in the middle, and then this warm red with warm sort of salmon colors that Afshar pieces are so well known for. And it probably has um, orange uh, wefts on the back of it. Uh, but uh, absolutely wonderful fragment. I mean, a wonderful bag face, rather. Um, it's missing some of the edges, I guess, so technically that makes it a fragment. But uh, graphically, this is very, very nice. And is uh, it's a one foot 10 by two foot seven, estimated at two to $300, which is a ridiculous low estimate. <coughs> uh, uh, more realistically, uh, a thousand to $1,500 anyway, at least. And then this, the Yamud Ensi, um, if you like Turkoman products, Central Asian carpets and so forth, this one is a, is a nice one, uh, made in the late 19th century, but very good colors. Um, this was, you know, Dixon bought things because they were visually the, the best of the type that he could afford. And this is a very nice example. Very, very good graphics on it. The field decoration with these, these, these secondary sort of gulls occupying the fields. And then you have this double a um, uh, 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 skirt, alum, uh, tree alum skirt at the bottom with two different colors. One in the background, it looks like it's in dark blue, and then in, in, in the background on this one is in dark red. And then the field is sort of in a plum color. Lots of interesting colors on here, lots of interesting parts. And uh, again, very modestly estimated at five to $700, $250 opening bid. And we only have a couple left here. And then there's another Yomud carpet fragment. And uh, uh, this one is, they've got it dated out to 1870. Um, looks old than that to me. I, I think they're very being extremely conservative on the dating just to keep everybody happy um, uh, uh, out there. But this is a, this, this looks like an early 19th century fragment to me. The way the lattice is done, the use of this white and so forth, the way this, this, the border is done. And then this, this element up here, this style, you typically only see on, on rugs that were made at the very beginning of the 19th century. And then you have this black thing. This is, you know, uh, uh, almost like what you see on Arabachi rugs, that kind of thing. All right. And then uh, the last one is another garden carpet. This, these are in the online sale. You, don't, you know, it's not a live bid situation. And this is another one of these garden carpets, very similar in many ways to the other one. This isn't as old. But it again has the river pattern, the water flowing down through the middle, and you have all these little boxes of different types of flowers blossoming all through it. They're very geometric. They they stylize them geometrically all the way around, and then you have this uh, um, uh, outer border, um, like the walls, going around it. Uh, nice example. Estimated at just eight to twelve hundred dollars, four hundred dollar bid. It's just four by nine feet. This is a big rug, um, made in this the last half of the 19th century. It's an old rug. That's really old. Compared to some of the other things here, it's not quite, it doesn't seem that old, but it's a very old rug and it's a wonderful rug. And, uh, you know, if you're a textile buyer and you like Chinese textiles, Chinese silks to go with your Chinese porcelain collection and all that, 
or you, you collect Indian or Central Asian stuff and uh, are a fan of the history of uh, China and the, the Mongols and the Silk Roots and the, the, the relationship between um, uh, the, the Middle East and China and all that and the shared commerce. This is all the kind of stuff that came out of it. Um, and in and, 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 and another 50 years, you're never going to see this stuff anymore. Uh, this is, these are very, very old pieces, and they've been scooped up uh, all over the place by, uh, by collectors and institutions. And uh, this, is, this is not a sale that happens all the time. Uh, it's a rather rare event, and I, and I hope that you uh, check it out at least. Even if you're not a textile buyer, check it out and, and really um, get a feeling for the, for, for the, for the visual aspects of, of, of these silks and these woolen uh, products because they are so skillfully made, so beautifully done. Um, like this, obviously, and uh, it'll be an interesting sale to see what the results are. It'll be very interesting to see what the results were, and of course, it, buying it um, and having the receipt with the with the Jim Dixon provenance isn't a bad thing, because uh, he was extremely well known for a very long time in the rug collecting, in the art rug world, the museum world, when it came to old textiles and rugs. He was a featured speaker fairly often. He, uh, you know, rug symposiums, with, with, they held them out in San Francisco. They'd have, they'd have motorcades of, you know, people would be invited to go to Jim's house and they would go out there and he built a house. He was actually a gardener, a landscaper. And uh, he built this uh, very interesting glass and, 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 and uh, open, concept house and he filled it with his rugs and the collection had about 700 pieces in it um, this is I think just the beginning of it um, so we'll we'll see we'll see if, if more of it comes onto the market down the road but these are some awfully good examples and maybe these this is the the best of it I don't I don't know I've never seen his entire collection I've seen bits and pieces of it uh, and it's been featured in rug rabbit and other online um, uh, 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 rug uh, uh, publications um, and um, everybody knows who he is, so I expect a, 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 a you know I'm I'm hoping he'll have, there'll be a good crowd uh, to enjoy this because this is an event and a very interesting sale. So check it out if you're interested in textiles. And um, that's it for today. And uh, have a great rest of your week. We've got some other things we're working on this week. And we'll be back with them. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Leave a comment. Love to hear from you. And if you like these uh, kinds of videos where we go off track a little bit from the normal Chinese silk, Chinese bronzes, Japanese, Arita, all that regular stuff that we talk about all the time, which is, uh, which is uh, very interesting. This is another element. And uh, it's a, and, uh, uh, something worth uh, learning about, I think. I think it's a, a, a fascinating area of art. Okay. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you later this week. Bye-bye.